Hey everyone, it's Matt here. Welcome back to another episode of Savant's Tech Talk. The cryptocurrency space has witnessed many innovations since Bitcoin hit the scene. And these include consensus mechanisms like proof of stake and proof of authority, which serve as alternatives to Bitcoin's proof of work. These consensus mechanisms were proposed in light of criticisms pertaining to proof of work's energy consumption and scalability. When it comes to transactions per second, Bitcoin and other proof of work based blockchains suffer from a lack of scalability. This is due to the fact that Bitcoin is based on a dispersed network of nodes that must come to an agreement on the presence state of the blockchain. This implies that the majority of the network's nodes must come to an agreement regarding verification. Only then can a new block of transactions be confirmed. So although Bitcoin's decentralized nature provides a safe and trustless ecosystem, it also limits its ability to be employed on a broader scale. In terms of transactions per second, proof of stake blockchains typically outperform Bitcoin. Proof of stake consensus mechanisms are some of the most popular methods for reaching consensus. The benefits of proof of stake are beneficial in that they give network validators an even stronger financial incentive to act in the interests of the network. In addition to this, it doesn't need a lot of processing power or sophisticated equipment, and it also allows for sharding, which significantly increases scalability for blockchain networks. Proof of authority, on the other hand, offers the same benefits, but it's more suited for enterprise level blockchains or private networks due to the limited number of validators that usually accompany it. Also, it addresses one disadvantage of proof of stake that's often neglected. So in today's video, we're going to look at proof of authority. As always, if you find this topic interesting, then you can let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. You can also let us know if you find it interesting by saying so in the comment section down below. Now let's jump into it. So how does proof of authority work? Proof of stake consensus bases its functionality on the assumption that people who have staked their tokens will act in the interest of the network. If they do otherwise, then they run the danger of losing their stake. That's why it seems reasonable to assume that the more stake users possess, the more incentivized they are to maintain the best interests of the network. However, this assumption ignores the fact that although equivalent stakes may be worth the same in terms of money, they might not be worth the same to their owners. A person who stakes 20% of the overall assets within a network, for instance, is likely to be far more invested in the network's growth than an individual who stakes only 1% of their earnings, regardless of the actual stake amount. Proof of authority seeks to improve on this aspect. Interestingly enough, it was Ethereum's co-founder and former CTO, Gavin Wood, that brought the term forward in 2015. Unlike proof of stake, with proof of authority, instead of staking their coins, users stake their reputation and identity, meaning that it's a reputation-based consensus mechanism for blockchain networks. This stands in sharp contrast to other blockchain systems that encourage anonymity, thereby allowing users to join their networks without the need to reveal their identities. So in proof of authority systems, validators are well-known entities who risk their reputation in exchange for the authority to validate blocks. This twist on the proof of stake mechanism is one of the reasons why it's also called proof of staked authority. So it eliminates the need to account for any monetary disparities among validators. And it makes sure that those who are participating in the network are equally incentivized to contribute towards the network's progress. Due to the identification requirement, proof of authority lacks a practical use for public blockchains like Bitcoin and Ethereum, which possess hundreds, if not thousands of validator nodes. As a result, proof of authority networks often include a limited number of validator nodes, leaning less towards decentralization. Also, like proof of stake, they're equally capable of generating high throughput. Similar to proof of stake, proof of authority is less resource intensive in comparison to proof of work based blockchains. Therefore, it lacks dependence on sophisticated equipment such as expensive mining rigs to validate blocks. That being said, proof of authority networks usually consider entities with a well established reputation as validators, which implies that obtaining such a function isn't within the average person's reach. Since the number of validators on proof of authority networks tends to be lower, it's more optimal for networks that are operating at either an enterprise or a private level, where there's already a certain amount of trust among the participants. It should be noted that Hyperledger Bezu, an Ethereum client aiming to be more enterprise friendly, provides two choices involving proof of authority. 
Another compelling application for proof of authority is test nets. Proof of authority consensus is suitable for enabling a controlled environment where features can be tested prior to being released on the mainnet. Proof of authority is also used on three of Ethereum's test nets, Koban, Gorli, and Rinkby. Also Polkadot, one of the most popular blockchain protocols right now, began as a proof of authority network in testing last year before transitioning to the proof of stake network for its complete release. Now let's look at the limitations of proof of authority. The proof of authority method is thought to diminish the need for decentralization. As a result, some may argue that this consensus mechanism is simply a way of making centralized systems more effective. Though this provides proof of authority as an appealing solution for huge organizations that have logistical requirements, it does cause some hesitancy, particularly in the context of cryptocurrency. Additionally, even though proof of authority systems have high throughput, the credibility of features like immutability can be a bit doubtful, especially when censoring and blacklisting are simple to implement. Also, revealing the identity of the validators might result in third-party manipulation. If a rival wishes to destabilize a proof of authority network, for example, then they could try to persuade a publicly recognized validator to commit fraud or other dishonest acts so that they can damage the system from the inside. Consensus mechanisms like proof of work, proof of stake, and proof of authority come with their own unique sets of benefits and shortcomings. In the end, it's probable that proof of authority will get the most momentum in the corporate environment. It's very improbable that proof of authority based mechanisms will power public platforms with a multitude of users. However, they're currently excellent at creating tight and lean networks customized to the demands of a small group of known stakeholders. And proof of authority will likely have the most impact when it comes to creating these kinds of networks. So there we have it, a look at the proof of authority consensus mechanism. Once again, if you enjoyed this video or found it insightful, don't forget to let us know by hitting that like button and subscribing to this channel for more videos. Thank you for watching. Thank you.